between the rise of the Kimrog Empire and the tumultuous Demon Wars, there was an enigmatic era. A time when brave souls traversed oceans and continents in search of glory, riches, and power. Let us tell you of the days of high adventure. Hello and welcome to High Adventure. We are back and the party uh, has done quite a bit of exploring on this uh, uninhabited island, or perhaps uninhabited island, uh, upon which they have shipwrecked. And in the last session, um, the brothers did a bit of exploration. Uh, Cade, taking on the form of a dolphin, was able to discover a mysterious underwater uh, cave system uh, on the north end of the island. And one of those three um, terminus points, uh, the cavern to the furthest uh, to the north, um, had a shaft of light that he was able to perceive. So coming back and assuming a, uh, a form of himself, he and his brothers then were able to kind of scour the land heading north and, and west until they found a cluster of rocks and a small, uh, cave shaft opening. Um, crawling down, using up the entirety of the rope that they currently had had, uh, they knew that this opened up into a cavern but did not have light. So you all returned to camp. You you had dinner. You did some additional fortifying of the camp, um, knowing that you had tracked those webbed feet um, to a point not far away from the camp where it looks like perhaps Whoever these creatures were, were observing, um, observing the, the camp and the people there. Um, during the night, Captain Fu, you know, had multiple guards on, on watch, uh, maintaining the fire and maintaining torches for the guards kind of on a perimeter walk. Um, the best weapons that people have been able to craft have been really simple um like quarter staffs and also spears um with like sharpened tips so the night goes uneventfully actually um there's there's no disturbances there there are no attacks there's no intrusions um and you guys wake up in the morning to find yourselves um thirsty um it it's you know the the procedure now being that you're a couple days in um people go and they fill up whatever they can uh from the river so uh, what do you guys do uh, yeah there's some things and and return to the cave and do some exploration yeah let's let's get some more rope and uh, maybe a torch or two that, that way we, uh, I don't have to burn up, uh, spells. Good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you guys gather some, some, um, wood that you can use, um, and you, you get it going from the fire, from the campfire. Um, you see Captain Fu is kind of up and working with a few of the other crew members to, to kind of look at the provisions that you guys have been able to find there's some fruit um there it looks like there's a couple guys that are already up and they've waded out into the shallows and they're doing some fishing um and you see another group of guys with some nets and they have they're they're kind of um taking this makeshift raft that they've built from some of the scrap wood that you guys recovered and they're going out a little bit further with some nets mm -hmm. So it's, it seems like the, the camp is already up and, and bustling. Um, you were able to grab some of the uh, vine rope that you guys have, have gathered and that the rest of the crew since has gathered and made. Um, so you figure you can extend your, your current rope to cover an additional 30 feet. So I think that's 90 total? Yeah. 
Okay. So um, with the torches and the extension of rope, um, you guys head out. Um, you make it halfway across the island. Uh, you stop at the creek for some fresh water. Uh, make a survival check to see if you can find some food. Twenty-one. Fourteen. Okay, so you're you're able to find some like natural fruits that are growing, um, and with the twenty-one, I'll say that you're also able to uh, actually spear a decent-sized fish um, in, while you're in the river. Um, you you know how to gut a fish, and you know um, how to cut. The, the edible lean meat off and share it with your brothers. So you guys have a little uh, bonus on top of some fruit and water. Um, the scimitar. Yep. You, you make your way across uh, the rest of the island back to uh, that spot of kind of hilly, rocky area where you guys left off. Um, and it looks undisturbed. It looks like no one's been through this area. Good, good, good. Let's tie the mm. tie the rope off and let's try this again. All right. <clears throat> okay. So you guys actually make a, a a knot and with the rope secured and the extension, um, you can make your way down. And and is just so I know is Cho going back down first? So yeah, I think Cho would be the best. As you're going down, you kind of have to go down holding the torch behind you. Um, and then you can get down to the, the you know, to where the the, uh, the chute kind of opens up, the shaft kind of opens up. And you, you sort of bring the torch around. And when you do, it, it reveals gradually, and as your eyes adjust, it reveals a underground cavern and you actually see that there's like a, a pool of water in this cavern. Um, the walls uh, are, are very rocky, um, but you can also see that there's kind of a perimeter of dry land around this center pool in this big cave. So you're kind of coming through on a diagonal, almost through the ceiling, but looking down below you, you see that there's this pool um, and then there's this dry land kind of on the perimeter. and Make a perception check. Don't forget, you got your guidance and inspiration, daily. You so I'm in addition. It was when we first start. No, just just a reminder. Just a reminder. Thanks, bud. Um, you you don't see. You, you feel like there's stuff piled up on the dry area, like mm -hmm. like maybe some barrels, maybe a couple small chests. How many and feet down? Stuff. About how many feet down I, from where I'm hanging? Um, it's 20. And, and that would put you right by kind of the shallow end of this big pool mm -hmm. and the, the dry, rocky land around it. And how far from the... I'm about, what, 50 feet down from the hole? Yeah. How far th okay. So your uh, rope, could, you could basically climb down the rope mm -hmm. um, with your legs and one hand, and kind of have the torch, you know, in your other hand. Mm -hmm. If you do that carefully. Yes. I will climb all the way down, and I'm looking for a safe place to jump. Okay. You can make either athletics or acrobatics. Acrobatics. Uh, 22. Yeah. So you easily kind of like flip off the rope and jump onto the dry land so you don't make any splash. Um, Shao and Cade, the, the tension on the rope, as you guys are kind of anchoring it, it, it goes like limp. So whatever, you know, you, you felt before, like clearly the weight and the pull of your brother on the rope, and then at some point it just kind of goes limp. I uh, turn, I turn to Cade, and I say, "I think it's my turn. Got to make sure brother's safe." Um, 
Do you mind staying topside till we transcend down this hole? And then maybe meet us through the water side? Well, Would remember, be... you, you have anchored, you tied the rope around the big boulder. Yeah. So if you okay. want, you can leave it there. It's up to you. Um, all right. So, Shao, you, you're you going to climb down? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll get to you in a second. So, sure. Sho, you are on this rocky area, and you definitely see now as you're closer and you have this torch, you you see that this rocky um, perimeter goes out for about 40 feet. So this this cave is pretty massive. It's got like a hundred foot radius, right? So that there's there's this pool in the center, and then where you are on the dry land. Looks like there's just, for for as far as your torchlight can see, like let's say 30 feet in each direction, you just see piles of stuff. Like in one pile, you see just piles of small wooden crates. Um, another pile is a pile of weapons, like axes, swords. Some of them are rusty and like older looking. Um, you see a few chests, you, you see, um, a, a big pile of uh, like supplies, like rope, um, like canvas. So it, it almost looks like the kind of stuff that you would see on on ships or on land, uh, but it's it's just piled up. I feel um, as a, as a long-standing member of the Rogues Guild, this looks like a loot stash. It. It could be. Now, you, you haven't really explored, like I said, your torchlight doesn't illuminate the whole place. But you can tell just by where you are that it's a pretty big cavern. Um, and that there seems to be more even just beyond the flickering light of your torch. Um, so, smash cut back <laughs> to Shaozen. Um, are you also carrying a torch down when you go down? Yes, sir. Okay. So go ahead and make your acrobatics roll. Um, you're you're going to do a similar thing where you, you're going to try to climb down the rope and then jump off onto the dry land with your torch. So go ahead and make I that. got an 18, sir. That's more than enough. So you you jump off. Um, Cade, you feel the tension released, assuming then that your other brother has gone down. Uh, what do you do? I'll be heading down too, but I'm not going to be bringing the torch. I'm just going okay. to cast Dark Vision on myself. Okay. And head down. All right. You begin to head down. So, um, Shao, you kind of land and you see your brother Cho standing a around this just cluster of goods. Uh, you see, you know, crates, chests, piles of rope and canvas, um, piles of weapons. Uh, a lot of this stuff looks like maybe it's been down here for a long time. Um, and it seems like there's more. Like you could walk around the perimeter of this cave. Okay. If you were so inclined. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll investigate it. And I'll tell Cho that I'm going to head one direction and I go maybe advise him to go to the other direction, kind of get a, a feel for how large this is and maybe if we see something that's usable. Okay. I mean... We're um, out of weapons and Cade, you you get down, um, make your acrobatics um, or athletics, either one. That was a one. <laughs> All right. No, it doesn't mean anything because you don't really have a torch. It just means that you fall into the water. So yeah. splash into the shallows of the water. Uh it is salt water. And um you you kind of crawl up onto the rocky shore. Um, brothers, you guys hear the sound of the splash and you, you see your brother. Um, but basically you guys see that, uh, well, Cade, with your dark vision, you could see much, much further. So basically you see around the, the ring around this central pool mm -hmm. is, is just a maze of, it's like a flea market. It's like one pile of stuff after another. Oh, wow. Um, chests, casks, barrels, crates, just loose piles, mm -hmm. weapons, tools. Um, some of it looks old, 
rusted or like pitted, you know, as if yeah. like maybe it was in salt water for a long time. The iron yeah. stuff is is not in good shape. Um, but you you guys could search if you want. Um, just kind Definitely. of describe what you're doing and how you're doing it. Uh, you guys pick first what you guys know. I guess. Well, so you see your brothers have kind of split off. Uh, They're about 20 feet apart uh, from each other okay. from kind yeah. of where you guys all came down. I'll, I'll get closer to them and I'm not shouting, but I'm just barely talking enough to get be heard and be like, brothers, there's different piles everywhere. You guys check wherever you want. I'm going to go check over here. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll if, start in, near the chest. Yeah. So, so basically, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have you guys, because you're not going to necessarily like need to make an investigation or a perception roll. This, this is more just like a matter of time, right? Hmm. So you find an abundance of mundane items and equipment. Um, some of the chests and crates that you open have, they look like even possibly like um, luggage. Like mm -hmm. you open some and there's like clothing. Mm -hmm. um, you open some chests or, or crates and there's like bolts of cloth. Uh, some of it's in good condition. Some of the stuff you find is ruined as if it was like submerged in water uh, for a long time. Um, Make perception checks, each one of you, and tell me what the results of those are. Natural 20. Okay. Hey. 19 for me, sir. Okay. Uh, 19 as well. All right. All three of you, as you're searching through this just warehouse of stuff, you hear movement in the water behind you. Ooh. And it, it sounds, it's barely audible, only because all three of you got higher than a 15. Were you able to perceive the sound of this movement in the water? It's not like a splashing movement. It's a very subtle movement, like something swimming under the surface of the water. And that is the only reason why you get to roll initiative and you're not a victim of a surprise <laughs> attack. So <Right>. let's roll <laughs> initiative, everybody. Yeah. It's oh, wait. How close am I to the weapons pile? <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right here. Okay, I'm grabbing weapons. Whatever looks nice, new, and that was, shiny. That was, that was nice. terrible. Ignition of roll. Uh, twenty-one. Ooh. Okay. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Twenty-two. Ooh, I rolled an so eight. Bad. So bad. Oh, it's not as bad as me. I rolled a what is that? A four. Don't worry, brothers. I'll I'll handle this. <laughs> <laughs> Shao has an eight and Kate has a four. Yes. Okay. Definitely going last. All right. So can, um, can we surmise so if, if, if this thing sees us or if, if I can still oh, yeah. attack it? Oh. No, you're you're okay. You're like I said, you're see each other at the same time. Your incredible perceptions. We're, we're so close that like all three of you kind of heard this sound and then you turned to look simultaneously towards the water, right? With your torches. <laughs> Those of you with torches just see the, the splashing out launch, like literal launching attack of these creatures as they're coming at you, okay? Mm -hmm. So your, mm -hmm. your perception was slightly higher and therefore your reaction to this near surprise attack is, is what's going to save you here. But the creatures that you see as they come out bear an uncanny resemblance to something that you've seen before because they have the head and facial features of a shark, mm -hmm. but with a kind of mannish humanoid body. Mm -hmm. Claws, webbed fingers, webbed feet. And, the mysterious and, surfer has returned. And fins. Yes, but there are three of them. You're going they, down. They're attacking you um, with with um, harpoons, basically. Nice. They, they're not man-made harpoons. These look like perhaps they are some kind of bone craft, like 
crafted from a very large bone of a very large animal kind of mm. crafted. Mm. And they're sharp and they've got a hook that looks like as if it punctured you and they ripped it out, it would cause a lot of damage. They're they're kind of barbed almost. So reverse fishermen. Yes. So uh they they spring out of the water, one on each of you, you know, in a formation, uh, launching themselves and but you're able to react first, Joe. So can you tell me what type of weapon I was able to find in the in the weapon pile? Oh, oh, that's a good. Let's let's see. <laughs> you know, the nice thing about out. Google is that you could type in things like random weapon random generator. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, random yeah. weapon. Love it. Love it. Um, you get a dagger <laughs> as long as it's plus five <laughs> and a d10 it's got some <laughs> magical properties <laughs> it we'll see fight you never know Woo-hoo. leave it up to rng i want a flaming sword no <laughs> that's what i'm about to pull out of my hat maybe nice all right uh roll a d10 d10 <clears throat> Nine. These are all actually pretty good. All right. The first and closest weapon next to you is a mace. I grab Ooh. it because it's okay. what I got to use. <laughs> right. I'm swinging I gave, on the, I gave on you the... my scimitar, bro. I gave it to oh. you. Oh. I, t- I thought you took it back. No. Okay. I got the scimitar. Still. Okay. All right. Um, so, I mean, the mace doesn't disappear. It's still there. So you have <laughs> you have your brother's scimitar in one hand, the torch in the other hand, and now it's it's your turn. This thing's launching itself towards you. Um, in actuality, <laughs> you you beat it in initiative, so this does count as your sneak attack because you're a sap. I just rolled another nat twenty. Oh, nice. No. <laughs> get this. Get this oh, full. Oh, this get purple re- die is revenge. loving me, bro. Wait, so you said plus my sneak attack? Yep. So that's 2d6. No. So, yeah, oh. so it's, it's you're you're going to do the scimitar damage is 6 plus okay. another d6 that's okay. just for the critical hit. Okay. Critical hit is 5. Total okay. of both die. So that's that's 11. Uh wait, no. Both die. What do you mean? Oh, you said 2d6, right? So I rolled a four and a one. One D six for the scimitar. Oh, one D six for the scimitar is a four. Okay. So, so that's four. six plus four is ten. Ten. Now your sneak attack damage is two D is six. six. Oh, it's two D six? Yeah. Is twelve plus, plus two. Plus whatever six. I roll. Okay. Right. Twelve. Uh eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. You I skewer. Don't know, yeah. You skewer. <laughs> this. Yeah. Okay. And it, it looks shocked, like it wasn't intending to be killed. It, and it's not dead, but it's you just like went right through its chest. And it's yep. it hits out this dark kind of, well, to you in this light, it looks black. This black kind of blood shoots out of its mouth and its chest. As I um, lunge and thrust the scimitar into his chest and then use my, uh, my additional bonus action to back back up and back away from the ledge so that the next attack can't sideswipe me. So you're di- you're using your your cunning action to disengage. Yes. All right. So um, that is good. That is now it's now their turn. So he cannot attack, uh, but he did make his death save. <laughs> He's um, like this isn't in the script. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, armor class fourteen against Shao. Does that hit? No, I have a 17, sir. Okay, miss it. Um, and against Cade, armor class 12. That's a miss. Yep. All nice. right. Shao, you are up. The gods Ooh. shine on us this day. Finally. Too. I'm not even drunk. I don't know how to react. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I'm just going to go hand to hand on this thing if I could throw some blows at it. Okay. So let's. Let's let's, uh, let's roll some dice. Let's roll some dice. 
Uh, that is a ooh. That is a seven. That is no good. Ooh, that's brutal. Okay, is that all? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I can. Right. Dis I can, If I dis if I disengage now, can I disengage right now and go into the uh, uh, patient defense just to make sure that I'm not going to get caught off guard? Uh, yes. Okay. So, Kane, you're up. <laughs> okay. Uh. Seeing these sharks really uh, pisses him off, and he just instead of shape changing, he holds his hand out because he's got his um, wooden shield in one hand, and he summons a flame blade, and he uh, runs up and just lets loose. Oh! <laughs> so. Snappy snap! Damn it! That was a sh bad roll. Uh, For the attack roll. Yeah, the attack roll was bad. That's only a 10. Okay. You miss. <laughs> uh, but the, it's clear that they are not happy about seeing flame. And and also, remember, your flame is an additional light source now. Yes. So they... Um, 10 and 10 for the flame blade. Yeah. All right. So uh, back to the top of the order, Cho. Do I notice that they, they were fearful of the flame? No, not... Not so much fearful. Okay. I'm going to attack the next closest proximity. And that is a 14. Are you going to finish off the guy that you stabbed? Or are you, are you going to... Oh, is, he's not dead. Oh, that's right. No. You saved, yeah. Let me let me go ahead and finish him off. And that okay. was a 14. It was Four, a 14. 14's a hit. Roll damage. Six. Oh. Is he dead? He's close. Nope. I he's close. <laughs> he seems he's... like he seems like if you left the cave right now that he would die of blood loss. Um <laughs> I disengage is my cunning action. He yeah, he seems hellbent on skewering you. Um we'll see if he actually achieves that. Twenty one to hit. Jesus. Oof. That'd be a hit. Uh, He's mad, brother. Take 11. Number two, Shao. 18 to hit. It does hit. Uh, take 11. Wow. Jeez. Ouch. Man, Damn. These guys are paid. They're not joking. Yes. Uh, it's such a pain to do this. I need to have like nat a 20. that I can turn. It's a nat 20. Yeah. God yeah. dang it. <laughs> I'm going to get a webcam in here so I can just have it sitting right on top of my dice. Uh, to eight, that. You hit me. 17 points of damage. Mm, Ouch. 17. Uh, Smack. Remember, Dungeon Masters, that if you choose to implement the Bill Allen damage alternative scoring system, that it works with the bad Monsters guys as well. Too. So ah. be careful. Please. Be careful. Um, and that's all three of them. So now this brings us to Shao. Shao goes crazy. I think I'm just going to let loose on this guy. Yeah. Just all saw right. Kate get smacked. Yeah, I just saw brother getting <laughs> smacked, and that's not going to happen here. Let's roll this. Jesus, cry me. 13. Okay. Is that a hit? Yep. Okay, uh, that thing takes six total on that one, and then I'm gonna spend the key point, and then I'm gonna go flurry of blows on this son of a gun. Okay. And roll that one. Wow, this is seven. Wow, this is whiffing. This is bad rolls. Terrible. At least you're hitting, man. Oh, yeah. Hit one, miss one. <laughs> okay. Um, Cade, you are up. Uh, like I'm reeling back and I just come in just howling and druidic just going crazy Plain blade. and I, oh my god it's a nine come on guys nine total uh, we're, yeah, yeah. We're roll a three and um, just I'm gonna compensate because I know if I take another critical it's gonna be real dangerous I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and spin a shape change and change into the cat I saw oh Changing into a devil cat. All right. Um, cool. uh, I also need to make 
concentration your bonus. Save for the well, uh, uh, for both of those. While my brothers are engaged in combat, I am trying to to determine if the casks that we or the barrels that we saw are filled with liquid. Good luck. Oh God. <laughs> You, you can't do that while you're in combat. You would oh, have to actually oh. go over them and smell them. Okay. Um, okay, Tried, top of the order. Cho, your guy is hanging on by a thread. I'm going to kill him. Uh, 22. That's a hit. Got to be dead More than dead four now. damage, he's dead. Nine. Nine. Yeah, he he drops. You you cut him across his chest, and this time he, he doesn't. He just drops. He kind of splashes. Near, near the, like where the water meets the rocky shore and, and does not move. Um, all right, number two looks over and sees his his brother get killed and he's going to <laughs> wing but miss on Shao Zen. Yes. Number three um, is going to be defensive. He does not try to attack. He goes into a defensive posture because he's freaked out by the fact that this man just turned into <laughs> a devil cat. Um, so he, you will have um, disadvantage against him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shao, you are up. Shao, I think, goes after the guy that's going after my good brother, Cade. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, well, the guy that's that's going after you is right up in front of you. Oh, he is still okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'll go ahead and engage him then. That's fine. Okay. Let's, let's do that. Oh, 19, finally. That's a hit. Roll damage. Uh, all right, damage is rolling. And that's an eight. Eight more. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Aki, Aki. Are you going to do your second attack? Yes. So pull your microphone just a hair away from your face. All right. Thank sorry, you. buddy. Okay. So go ahead and do your your bonus action attack. All right. Uh, that's a twenty, not a natural though. Okay. Yes. Hit. Roll damage. And then that's another six points. Okay. Um, that brings us to Cade in double cat form. Yes. You have two attacks. You can do okay. a claw and a bite, or two claws. Okay. I'll do a bite and then the claw. So these are disadvantage, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I gotta look at the chat. For the bite, that's a fourteen. Yes, a hit. Nice. Ooh, that is a supreme. Um, Eleven. Nice. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Thirteen uh, for the bite damage. Okay. And then the claw. Claw. Uh, is a miss. Okay. Top of the order, Cho. Uh, you see your brothers not far from you. Uh, it looks like um, Kate has turned into one of those cats that you saw yesterday and is holding his own. Um, and your brother, uh, Shao, is, is boxing up against this other weird shark creature. So... Who do you want to aid? I will aid Shaozin, my brother, okay. my eldest um, brother. I would assume that you're moving to a flanking position. I am. Okay. I'm coming in from the side with this gives you swift, the opportunity to swift do lateral move, sneak attack, sneak attack, and it's on. Oh, no, we're not. Fourteen. Yes, it. Oh, sweet. Roll damage plus sneak attack. Nine is what I rolled for the damage. And then sneak attack is, uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works. So then two more D6. Mm -hmm. uh, six. Okay, 15 total. It is dead. Nice. Um, Thank you, brother. This brings us to the last one who now will fight for his life against this devil cat. Devil cat. And probably miss 13. What's the devil cat's AC? Uh, 14. Yep. Miss. Just a miss. Just All a right. miss. Um, this then brings us to Shao. Yao. Shao's going to go ahead and jump 
on the back of this thing and see if I could take it out with my blows. Okay. Let me blow him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 21. I think that's the hit. Yes. I'll do that. And then that's five on that run. Okay. Oh, a natural 20 for a 26 nice. total. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm going to get this guy. He's not going to like me. Oh, that's yeah. el- that is 11 total. Okay. You jump and like basically like smash and then like elbow him, him which kind of knocks him forward. And Cade, now he's like in prime position for you. Um, and and right. he's, he's basically <clears throat> flanked. So... Um, you could do bite and claw or two claws. Uh, we're gonna do bite and claw. This is an advantage. Uh, that definitely hits for the bite. Oh god, another thirteen damage. Yes, thirteen. Claw. Uh, that is nope. The claws miss. Oh, so close. All right. Um, that brings us back to the top of the order. Cho. This this uh, combination of your two brothers working on this shark creature has not taken him down. He looks very wounded. Um, you can attack. Yes, I will move in with close proximity and assassinate this beast <laughs> with a thirteen. <laughs> uh, eight plus sneak attack damage. Eight. Yeah. So sixteen. That. Nice. You you skewer it from the other side. Um and, and as it drops the the last sound of it hitting the, the kind of rocky, gravelly shore, um, and a little bit of a splash of water. Um and you see the dark blood from all of these these creatures. Um it, it's not black, it's just a very dark red. But in the dim lighting that you have it's it appears very dark. Um, you, you see that kind of like ebbing out onto the rocky shore and out into the pool. Um, and there's silence after that. You hear the occasional, you know, drip of, <clears throat> of water, um, but that's about it. I, I pull the, the, the bodies of the creatures to a pile and inspect them. Okay. So Do they have the webbed feet that we saw. They they do. In fact, that's one of the first things that you notice. Their hands and their feet are webbed. Um, their skin is very tough. Uh, although they look like sharks, their skin is very tough. Um, like a thick kind of natural um, armor. Not not like not like a carapace, like a bug, but just like very tough. Okay. Um, like leathery, let's say. Yeah. Um, their weapons, like I said, you you see that all three of these harpoon-like weapons seem to be bone crafted. From what bone, you have no idea, but you estimate based on the size that it's got to be a pretty big freaking kind of ocean animal, because the bones are it's like the length of a spear, you know. But like, this is one bone with a sharpened kind of hooked, barbed end. Does it look anything? Does it remind me at all of the creature that attacked the ship? The bone structure. No. Good. Good question, though. Those. Those were more like conical, like a cone. The tip mm. is like a cone, and then a shaft from that. These are clearly like a bone where the end has been sharpened. Um, probably using something you know rock oriented, something primitive in in rating uh, but still very effective brothers let's continue let's let's <clears throat> continue looking at these goodies and see what we can find yes absolutely uh, before you guys had like pulled them to the center and this is unusual for you two the two brothers to see um just because it's like a weird display of anger from Cade that he actually ends up biting the face off one of those creatures because he's still angry inside and then then you guys pull him back to the pile and inspect them and he goes change back and 
looks like his regular self, but you know, you can still tell he's, he's been hurt pretty badly. But he seems calm now. I comfort him. I look at him curiously. Are you okay, brother? <laughs> I am now. Yeah, let's let's continue before we have more uh, surprises come up. But we gather what we can, and then maybe make our way up, and then maybe grab the camp and have them come down, and then gather whatever we can gather out of this usable stuff and uh, take it back to base camp. Good so, idea, brother. You you want to go through kind of the cavern? Um, it. Yeah. It would take you a few hours to go through everything. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. Can I can I turn to Kate and I say how so from from this point? How far is the other caverns? Mm -hmm. How 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 much of a swimming distance is it? And can we hold our breath, or do well, we need your aid? From the to get back to where center? the okay. the tunnels split. You yeah. estimated from here to, to where those underwater tunnels split was 1,200 feet. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Um, now, you make an intelligence check, Cade. Yes. Um, it's not great, but let's see what mine is. Um, it's, a, it's a seven. Do you remember? when you first were in dolphin form and you found this cavern, mm -hmm. how you kind of swam through the underwater tunnel and and perceived that it opened up into a pool and you saw the shaft of light. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That pool was at least 20 feet deep. Mm -hmm. You were swimming in. So now you guys are on the rocky shore with your torches, but you still have dark vision, right? Yeah, for like, I think it's eight hours. Okay. All right. I just wanted to to assess. So so if you guys want to just take the time, then tell me what you're exploring, each one of you. So I'll, 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 I'll basically fill you in on what you find. Instead of making walls, just tell me, like, mm -hmm. you know, do you, are you going through everything that's on the shore? Yeah. Okay. There's I stuff on the shore, and then there's Brother more. Brother Shao and I will... In. Yeah, brother and Shao and I can uh, Shao and I can uh, search the land while Cade searches the water. Is that what you're going to do? Uh, well, as a dolphin, did I remember if I saw anything underwater? Um, as a dolphin, what was your dark vision? It's it's only blind sight. Yeah, it's blind sight, but dolphins can see, but it's also dark, so I wouldn't be able to see as a as a dolphin so just, oh, just the answer is everything. no you didn't completely explore everything in right your um okay all right i will fill you guys in then based on yeah. each of your chunks so I'll check the one now shao yeah. and cho you guys begin searching through and there's there's enough stuff here to to supply a lot of things that you are missing um over the course of a couple hours you do find oil you find um some casks that are empty but they look like they might have at some point held wine or water or you know something um you find a lot of spoiled food that was in crates you find a lot of spoiled like materials and clothing a lot of like rusted tools and rusted weapons but you find plenty of mundane objects and items that could completely outfit your camp by any um, chance, do we you see also, anything? Oh, sorry. Well, go ahead. Do we see anything that resembles any of the crates that were below deck on our ship? No. Okay. Um, I mean, resembles in the sense that, like, they're crates, yes, but not that are marked by anything right. that you notice. Um, you do also see, while you're doing this exploration of all the stuff <clears> that's <throat> on this dry land, you see a, a cave tunnel, like a dry cave tunnel that heads east um Cade while you are searching so I, I'm assuming you're going to swim around in the yeah, the pool? yeah uh, in human form okay 
So basically, the pool is is pretty massive. Uh, it's it's like a twenty foot deep pool um, that comes up towards the the shallows, but at, at its center, it's twenty feet deep, right. and it has a a sixty foot radius. Okay. And when you go down there, you basically find um, a collection. What looks like a collection of of items, mm -hmm. um, and these these look like very primitive crafted items. But you see, like basically, like necklaces made out of coral. Um, you 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 find like these these beds of like seaweed, like kind of mm -hmm. soft, spongy seaweed. Um, and you find three nets, and these nets look like they are woven from a very tough uh, kind of resilient seaweed. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, oh. um, no. I, I can see underwater now with the dark vision still. Yeah. So basically you find like these three spongy um, seaweed slash spongy beddings, three nets, and then um, I'll Next say, season. let's see, how many? Um, you find two of those coral necklaces. Okay. I will throw the necklaces around my neck and take the nets and bring them to our little pile that we're cultivating to take out at least on this first trip. Okay. So the question of takeout. Um, to take anything out would require you guys to climb back up your rope. There is that dry um, cave tunnel that goes east. Did you guys want mm -hmm. to explore that? No, absolutely. I, yeah. I do, yes. 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 Okay. Um, you begin heading east, and there's there's occasional patches of like puddles, basically, where it looks like water from above is dripped down. Um, but it's kind of a rocky cave tunnel, uh, and for the first couple hundred feet, actually, it it stays rocky, and then it gradually kind of ascends. It goes up a little bit, and as it ascends, you you can actually feel the draw of of air like there's an opening up ahead mm -hmm. um, an extreme caution and stealth <laughs> absolutely <laughs> as, as you travel for hundreds more feet finally you eventually get to a point where you can like you could smell a different smell and you see like roots kind of coming through the cave walls uh and it comes out eventually to a point where you see light up ahead and it's kind of light, but it's like there's like foliage, like dense foliage. Mm -hmm. So you get to this point where you're kind of basically peeking out um, from underneath the roots of a tree that are exposed and hanging out over kind of an open, um, not a ravine, but just kind of like a ditch. And you hear the sound of some water. And it looks like maybe a little overflow tributary from the main river. But you figure you're somewhere in the middle of the island, not far from the main river. Not somewhere we've explored already. No, this is in the woods. It's on the other side of the river from your camp. Okay. So we make our way to camp then. Have yeah, we gathered go. all the things that we can carry, or we, were we just exploring? You, I'm just gonna say that you, you didn't know where this was gonna go. So if you want to go back and get stuff, you can carry as much as you can carry, and then go back to the camp. Yeah, let's get a let's get a uh, one supply running for people we head back in. Yeah, that's fine. You bring some people back with us to collect the rest of the things. Yeah, that's absolutely. Sure. So what is it that you guys are are kind of prioritizing? What are you bringing? That's that's your main priority. Uh, I'll bring some weapons because we need to outfit our our people. Okay. Yeah. Well, and you said that there was an oil cask? Oil? Uh, yes. Okay. There are two. Okay. Two are they oil. too heavy to carry by one person? Or no, do we... one, you could each carry one if you, if you needed to do that. Um, now, there are also like four more empty barrels um, that are watertight. You know, if you if you wanted to 
kind of just have an idea. So I'll like use the barrel and just um, put a bunch of weapons in the barrel so I can pick empty barrel and weapons up. Okay. That's that's fair. So I'm going to say that um, you're able to fit like eight different bladed weapons, right? So like okay. some short swords, maybe a, a you know a trident, a harpoon, uh, a couple axes, um, a long sword. Sounds good. Okay, so you're carrying a bunch of weapons. Shao's going to carry one of the the casts of oil. Cho, what's your priority i am looking for a <clears throat> an assortment of of clothing for the men on the land on land as well okay. as whatever else i can uh kind of bundle into like a knapsack type thing and drag okay. all right so i'll say that you're able to to salvage a, a combination of of clothing and like throw it into a, a chunk of canvas that that you throw over your shoulder so um you guys head out from the dry cave, you you kind of emerge, you crawl out from the roots um, and make survival checks, all of you. Can I make a mark or something, leave a sign? Of... Yeah, that's basically what I'm saying is, is okay. I want to make sure that you would remember where you are in the in the jungle. Ooh, so 14. Yep. 14. I rolled an eight. Well, that's fine. So you mark it, and then between you and the brothers, you guys kind of walk around a little bit from this point until you figure out sort of where you are. You okay. you make a couple other marks as you head towards east, towards the river. You cross the river, and you, you find yourself heading back towards the camp. Um, you end up on the other coast, a bit north of the camp. Okay. And then you walk down down the, the um, along the coast. You guys come to the camp with this stuff, and once again, like one of the sailors is like, "What? What have you found, Sun Brothers?" Yeah, I just. Go ahead. I find our cook, and I give him the oil cask. I'm not sure if he can use it as for cooking or for well, any. And other you know, thing. by the way, there is other stuff back there. Like there, there are actual like mess kits. Like there's pots and pans. There were, okay. you know, utensils. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, was, you guys come into camp, and and basically you are once again like the heroes of the camp, like the yeah, same. Gather bird. around, see what we've brought for you. Yeah, your your mother comes over, Captain Fu comes over, and they're like, "Where did you find all of these things? Tell us." There's oh, a cavern. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I'll just say that Captain Fu. There's a cavern. Uh, not too far away from here, that eventually we will probably need to have a group of us go back and find wares and different v variety of from shipwrecks, it seems, that these things are accumulated by these m creatures that we just uh, had our run in and disposed of. But uh, we're going to need to uh, go back at some point and then gather because three of us won't be able to transverse and do this multiple times. Really? Captain Fu is like you creatures you say, not this isn't this wasn't perhaps a, a, a pirate's cash. No. no. They were shark headed creatures, like what we saw on the water. Oh. But you think that there are valuable things there? Absolutely. Well there value to us. For let us, let us waste no daylight. He he, he says uh, half of you men, go with the brothers and, and begin bringing things back. We'll do a rotation. The other half of you, unpack what they have here. Uh, try to organize it and, and let us bring it into the main tent to see if perhaps we can we can start making use of these things. I take the group of men over to the weapons and I say, find something small that you can easily wield, just in case. They're they're excited. They Everybody grabs stuff. Um Zhao takes the, the cask of oil and kind of brings it over to his makeshift cooking hut. And he asks you guys, he's like, did you see any any items which might be beneficial for, for cooking and food preparations? Absolutely. Ah, well done. Ah. So you, you guys take a group of the men. Everybody's armed at this point uh, who wants weapons. You you go back. You find your, your tunnel. You spend the rest of the day ferrying stuff back and forth. 
and they'll they'll last and 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 they rotate through. So like when run groups brought their stuff back, they they start unpacking it, and the other group goes with you guys, um, and you continuously do this for the rest of the day. And as as the evening settles in, um, the camp is almost completely transformed with these stockpiles of different things. Um, Captain Fu at a certain point pulls you guys aside and tells you that he thinks that with what you have gathered that it would be possible to perhaps build some rafts, but not rafts are not great for going out into deep water. Uh, he feels like the canvas that you've been able to, to find and some of the tools that you've been able to find could allow him to build some so small sails and that these rafts could get you, um, you know, around the island, but not into deep waters. Mm -hmm. um, but he says the, the biggest thing perhaps now is the question of whether or not we try to leave this island to find another one that is perhaps inhabited or whether to to send a group of people to go try to find an island and to come back with help um, or something else. He, he says, he's like, you know, if, if we have the means to set a great fire and to create a great amount of smoke, perhaps it could get the attention of a larger ship traveling by. This could Once, be good as it could lead to a rescue, but it could also be bad if it were, say, for example, pirates. And one, once he brings up the subject of creating a signal, I'll, I'll speak up. Captain, I could perhaps help with that at least idea if you, if you think it's wise. Uh, I could prepare a spell tomorrow to where I would be able to use the clouds and create clouds to create a message in the sky. So I could say, help here, shipwreck. Very limited amount of uh, words I could form, but something to be specific. He seems impressed. He's like, this This is truly a magnificent power of a most celestial sort. I do not know, truly, what the wisest course is. If I had some inkling as to where we were within the islands, I would, I would have a better suggestion in terms of our course of action. But this is clearly an uncharted island and not inhabited, at least by any folks who you've been able to find. I am not certain as to what the best course of action is. But I will, I will honor your counsel on this matter as we must discuss this and take advantage of what we can while we can. Please also keep in mind that we do not know how large this colony of sea creatures is, and we killed three of their kin and took their stash. They will be coming for us. Mm. Yes. This is true. We, we are in a better position now, though, having proper weapons, though still no armor. And my sailors have a basic command of combat, but they are not, in truth, great soldiers. We we will have to be vigilant, and uh, thanks to your assistance, we, we have a, at least a fighting chance. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to, to, to survive. But yet, it is even more pressing than perhaps for us to make a decision about what to do. I do not no. feel like we can live on this island permanently, not with mere fruit to eat and the occasional catch of fish. Agreed. Well, when, while you're making, Captain, while you're making um, the vessels you're, you spoke of, maybe we would be able to do a little bit more exploration and maybe find a hint of where we're at. That way we could uh, yes. go forward with the decision to either send a group out or all of us go or even uh, create that message in the sky. Yes, I, I do not know as of yet 
how many of these supplies that you have been able to, to find can be used in order to make rafts. And I do not know the, the size of the rafts that should be made, nor, nor how well they can float in deeper waters. We will have to begin construction and some, some testing will have to happen. None of my men are shipwrights or proper carpenters. And therefore we will have a bit of learning to do as we go along, but we will do our best. And it, it, I agree it would be wise for you and your brothers to continue to explore the island as certainly more could be found. Captain Fu, we did find so. something else as well. There is at the top side of the cave, there was a rock formation that resembled a symbol, a symbol that we are both, that we told you about while we were on the ship, the ring that we found in the crate, the magical ring that disappeared. Yes. There is a symbol that represents that same, same thing. There were boulders aligned on the, above that cave system where we found it, that Cho saw, and these, he said that they look exactly like the symbol. Do you, do you think there is some kind of connection, perhaps, between those sea creatures? I there do. possibly could it, be. I believe it could be an ancient civilization. These were not recently formed structures. This has been here for quite some time. You think that they are civilized? Not, not simple beasts? I, I think they have some form of structure, yes. I don't believe that they are quite intelligent as it were. They are still primitive, but they do have some form of societal structure. And and could perhaps this symbol be used as a religious symbol? Maybe there's a tie. There's a connection between these dwellers of this island and, and this symbol that might have some kind of like legendary connection to these islands or at least a history. That, that ring possibly could have been one of theirs and may, maybe it could have been a reason why they attacked as well. Not just to take our things, but to reclaim something that was once theirs. Uh, if only my, my old navigator Min Zhu had been among the, the living. He was much wiser than I about uh, the esoteric and the unknown. The, the, the religions. It it seems that further investigation is warranted, and it will certainly take us time to begin working on rafts and sails and and that sort of thing. But hopefully, as you uncover more, we will make more progress. And see what can be done. Today was a first good, a really good step in the direction that we need to go. Indeed. We all owe you our gratitude. You have been very honorable. And he bows. Oh. And that is where we'll end this episode of High Adventure. <laughs> Tune in next time to see what else the brothers find. And as always, make sure that you like and subscribe. Click on that notifications bell so you don't miss the next episode. And we'll see you. Peace out. It's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things.